OK, so this short video today uh, will describe the process of putting a load code uh, for an encrypted sound project onto a Zimo MS sound decoder. And we'll work through the whole of the load process from uh, beginning to end, including uh, showing some issues that might come along. So in this case, we've got the decoder itself. We've, we've got a Plux MS450. We've got the decoder tester board, which is Zimo's MS Tap K. Um, you can use any tester board. It really doesn't make any difference what you, you use for it. And we've got the Zimo programmer itself, the MX Ulf A. Um, and you can see here we've got a USB stick as well, which we'll use to transfer the, the, the firmware files and the encrypted project files across as well. The point of the encrypted loads is that if you have this, this kit yourself, um, you can download the encrypted project sound files um, as, a, as a complete and finished project and load them onto your Zimo decoder yourself. You don't need to have it sent away to a sound provider to load for you, but you will need to get a unique load code for that specific decoder. Um, so if, for example, in this case, we're loading a U-Choose HiMEC Class 35 encrypted project, we need to get the load code for this specific MS450 Plux 22 for this specific decoder from YouTube, and there's usually a cost involved in getting hold of the load code. Now, the load code isn't specific to the HiMIC project, it's specific to YouTube. So, having got the load code for this decoder, we can load any of the YouTube's encrypted sound projects onto this specific decoder. The low code won't work with any other decoder but this specific one. So first thing is to actually plug the decoder into the board. So just making sure we get it all lined up correctly. That's the Plux socket on the tester board. So the next stage is to get the decoder ID uh, for which we need to read some CVs off the decoder. Um, internally, these are CV 250 251, 252 and 253. Now you can either do that through whatever DCC system you normally read off or we can do it directly with the MX ELF. Okay, so we do that by holding down the R button and then we use the little scrolly wheel at the bottom here to go through to the service programming ID and LD, that's decoder ID and load code, that means. So then we press R again when, when we get there. And that will read those four CVs off of the decoder for us, which it's done. And yeah, well in this case, the decoder ID is 6, 255, 205, and 109. OK, so I've prepared a USB stick with um, the appropriate files. In this case, I've got the encrypted load of our HiMIC uh, Class 35 project. Also on the, uh, the USB stick, you can see at the bottom there, the ZSU file. That, um, at the time of making this video, is the latest version for the MS decoder, so 4.227. Um, so we'll also update the firmware version while we're there. The other two files are the, the MX Elf bin and ULF. Those are the software versions for the MX Elf programmer itself. We're not going to be using that in this case. OK, so we've got the USB stick ready to go now. So with everything connected, we plug that into the, the loader. And in a moment, you'll see this should come up. If I can get the brightness right there, it's found the firmware version at the top and the encrypted um, project file as well. So we haven't actually put the load code in yet. So if we attempt to load this, which is going to be button two, it goes off and attempts to get the details of the decoder. But this should fail because we haven't actually put the load code into the decoder yet. So give this a moment and it will it will come back and, and give an error. Sometimes it takes a little while to go through the sequence. Still busy thinking about it. So this can take a couple of minutes. In fact, it's begun the process and this should fail because we haven't got the low code on the decoder yet. 
Okay, so in this case, it's come up and told us decoder not found. Um, in the past, you you sometimes get messages like um, NC ACK for no acknowledgement, um, but this seems to be the way it's working at the moment for the MS decoders over the track load. So what we need to do now is um, put in the, the load code correctly, so we'll work through that next. Now occasionally you get a decoder that won't respond, so what we're going to do here is try and force the firmware update on it, which we do by holding down the R button, and we'll go to the X, CV144 and 29 options, so R again once we scroll to that. Then we scroll to the firmware, so in the case 4.227 is our latest version, and press R again. Now that will search for the decoder type, and hopefully it will find it and put the, it'll force the firmware back on without having to read too much back from the decoder. So you can see it's cycling through the different decoder types now, trying to locate what it is it should should discover that it's an MS450 at some point. Can be a bit of a slow process as it locates it. It did actually find it there. This is a type 2 of MS450 Plux, this one. So off it goes. You need to make sure that the software on the MXELF is pretty up to date if you're going to do that because uh, it, it needs to have a full selection of the different decoder types that it, it might come across. So always good to be on the latest version of the MXELF software. So here we are, it's just doing the firmware now. It doesn't take too long, it's a minute or so on a MS decoder. Quite a lot quicker on an MX. Now this has happened because of a result of trying to load an encrypted project without putting in the decoder ID first. Uh, it shouldn't really brick like that, but uh, at least we got a way back. Okay, almost there now. 90%. Wait till the flashing stops on the decoder so it stopped doing its communicating with the decoder. And we'll take it off and just test that it responds on the DCC track again in a moment. Okay, power it up. There we go, it's responding to the lights there, so no issues. Now we haven't got any sound on this decoder now because it failed the um the load of the encrypted project earlier, um, but at least it is responding to uh, DCC control and hopefully motor as well. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so we're back to loading the encrypted project again. So we go R and then find the service mode programming ID and load code. Reading the CVs for the decoder ID. Shouldn't take too long. There we are, that's what we had earlier. And I've got here the, the load code for this particular decoder. So we press R to move onwards. And the first CV is 248. Let me go backwards there. 248. Press R again to progress to the next number. And the next one is 115. I mean, you can obviously program these CVs directly using your normal programming um, track and whatever system you normally use. Um, the CVs here that we're changing are 260, 261, 262 and 263. So the next one is 109. But it's just as easy to do it for the MX Alpha. Okay, and the final one, 137. There we go, just double check, 248, 115, 109, 137. That's this particular 
app load code. So R again to actually do the programming. There we go. Acknowledging. So that should be in the decoder now. And we need to reboot. There we go. When we turn the power off. I'll just take the power off altogether. Just pull it out and pop it back in. So that decoder has now got its load code in the appropriate CVs, and we can um, load the encrypted project just with button two now. You can see there it's got the HiMet project listed. So button two, off it goes reading the details of the decoder. And it should now, there we go, incoming. And then it will go to clear flash. That takes a little while, so we'll come back to that in a moment. You won't know that it's successfully taken it all until you see the percentage of the actual load go through beyond 0%. So once you see the 1% in there or beyond, you know it, you know it's all worked okay. Okay, so it's begun the load now. And as you can see, it's estimated 51 minutes to load this project. It's quite a big one. So we'll check in a couple of minutes time and it should have moved on a percent or two by then. There we can see it's on 1% now, so it has actually moved on. Um, we'll leave that to go to completion. Um, if you wanted to, certain types of decoders can be SUSE loaded. You'll, you'll see this other um, cable sticking out there. Now, that means that it gets it, it can load the sound project much quicker. It doesn't work for the firmware, but you can use it for the um, for the, the the big one, which is the sound project itself. Now, you mustn't have to have the track connected to the MXL for when you do that. It's one or the other. It's either SUSE or it's track. So, if you're going to use SUSE, make sure the track is unplugged from the MX alpha to the decoder. And that will plug into either that little SUSE connector there or the one on the other side, it doesn't matter which. SUSE load can be done with any of the Plux decoder types or with 21 pin or with Next18 or indeed with any of the, the large scale Zimo sound decoders which have the SUSE sockets on board the decoder itself. You can't do it with a wired type of decoder like an 8-pin or a 6-pin. That has to be done track-loaded like this, so um, they will be the slow ones. It can take up to just under an hour to do a an absolutely chock-a-block um, project on MS because there's so much data to transfer over the track. So be patient with this. As you can see, this, this one says 49 minutes to go, so we've got a long way to go yet. We'll come back to that in a bit. Okay, so it's all loaded now, and uh, I'm going to put it on the main track to test it. Here we go, just powering up via my sprog on the PC now. Note how it took uh, two or three seconds after loading the project to actually kick into life. That often happens when you've either lo loaded the firmware or the project, so you just be patient with it when you first start it up, hopefully it should now be fine. There we go. 